The crowd that lined the streets of New York in August 1926 had all the gaiety and expectation of people going to the movies. The newsreel cameras brought smiles of delight. The crowds were there for Rudolph Valentino, the great lover. For women in the 1920s, he personified the menace of forbidden love. But the crowds that August waited in the rain to see their idol in the flesh. For some, it would be the first time, for all, the last. Rudolf Valentino was dead. His body was lying in state in Campbell's funeral parlor. Valentino's effect on women astonished even the men who produced his pictures. A typical publicity stunt measured women's pulse rates as they watched a Valentino film. It was all due, they said, to his earthy origins as an illiterate peasant in Italy. But like everyone else, they misunderstood Valentino. He'd come from Italy as a young man, but he was neither illiterate nor a peasant. We were not a rich family, neither an aristocrat one. We were in the middle class, but in quite comfortable position. My father was a veterinarian, health officer, and a biologist. The majority of a uh, story not truthful that he came here because he was a poor boy, an immigrant, to make money to try to find fortune. No. In his life, he was always guided and pushed by spirit of adventure. He used to say, Italy is too small for me. When he arrived in New York at the age of 18, Valentino was hard up. Like so many immigrants, he had a photograph taken in rented clothes to reassure his family back home. And in order not to worry my mother, when he wrote, he went to the Waldorf Astoria and wrote a letter from there. But he didn't sleep there. He was not a guest of the Waldorf Astoria. On the contrary, he told me that sometime he even slept in the Central Park. Eventually, Valentino got a job at a New York cafe, dancing with the customers. He never took in his life any dancing lesson. He had a natural grace in dancing. When he went to Hollywood, his Italian looks condemned him to play the gigolo in an endless parade of screen villains. In 1919, director Al Parker gave him an important role in Eyes of Youth. His career was improving. His private life was miserable. His wife, actress Jean Acker, had left him. And that Christmas, he was depressed and lonely. I said, what are you doing for Christmas? He said, well, nothing. I said, haven't you any place to go? He said, well, no, I don't. I said, well, you sure do. I said, you're going to come home with me. This is our big night. My mother and father will be there in the presence, and you're going to be right with us. He said, oh, that'll be marvelous. So we made him Santa Claus. I had a, a red cape, and then we put a red hat on him, and we got cotton and put a white beard on him, and he handed out the, um, the presents. A lot of people have... Uh, it's made me laugh. A lot of people, you know, said, oh, how well they knew Rudy and what they did for him and all that sort of thing. And I think, hmm, 
Well, they, uh, there was one Christmas they forgot about Rudy before he, he was anything. After he did the Four Horsemen, that was different. Valentino now entered film history. He was cast as Julio, an Argentinian playboy. Director Rex Ingram exploited his skill as a dancer and his frank sensuality. At this period, the tango was regarded as an indecent dance. Ingram used it as a symbol of open eroticism. The Four Horsemen was scripted by June Mathis. She had spotted Valentino in Eyes of Youth. She became a close friend for the rest of his career. The film established Valentino as a new kind of screen lover. But this success did not bring him instant stardom. He played straightforward roles in other Metro films. Camille with the Russian actress Nazimova. The most impressive thing about Camille was its sets. And Valentino was surprised to learn that their designer was a young dancer, Natasha Rambova. Her real name was Winifred Hudnut. She was heiress to the Hudnut cosmetic fortune. Valentino fell in love with her. And the romance perfectly suited her ambitions. She was determined to become a major producer. Valentino joined famous players Lasky and was featured opposite Agnes Ayres in The Chic. These shots were taken during the production. In the title role, Valentino was a sensation. He played an Arab sheik who abducts an English girl to his desert tent. Natasha considered the story utter trash. Valentina was not happy about it either, but he mesmerized most women who saw it. His acting may look strange today, but some people saw that he conveyed ideas with his eyes which they daren't put into words. The very quality which appealed to women upset their husbands. Valentino inspired envy and ridicule from American men. They were not very understanding about Valentino. He came along as the first of the great foreign lovers. See, that was one of the interesting things about Gable. Every American man was perfectly willing that his wife should be in love with Gable. Because Gable was what he liked to have been. 
but they were not willing that their wife should be in love with this Dago. The Sheik made Valentino a top star. Natasha agreed to marry him. But Valentino's marriage ended in jail. The laws of California required a full year between divorce and remarriage. A bigamy charge was dismissed. But Natasha raised the question, why had famous players Lasky allowed its biggest star to go to jail? 